Hey guys, how are you? It's Yes. Uh, so I went to the bridge today, which is a church in Silver Spring, Maryland. It's very close to the Washington, D.C. Um, Maryland line. And there was an amazing word, and I just wanted to share it. Um, the pastor is, the lead pastor is Jermaine Jones, uh, and he is phenomenal. Just the word that the Lord reveals to him, it is always on point. And you can always tell that Pastor Jones does very thorough research. He always does his research. So the word from today, well, the their series that's going on right now is called Do North. And the whole purpose, the whole theme, or the purpose behind the theme is to get us to think about Think about God and how we as people can um, draw closer to God and and love him more and serve him more and just have our focus on God due north. And the word came from the book of Revelation uh, mainly, and it was chapter two, the message to the church in Ephesus. Now, so Pastor Jones opened up. And he explained the background behind the, you know, the first few chapters in Revelation. Um, it says the first three chapters of the book are written as letters to various churches in Asia Minor. And Asia Minor is now, you know, approximately where Turkey is, uh, warning them against their specific shortcomings. And one of the things <clears throat> that Pastor Jones was explaining, which is it's biblical, is that in that area and in that time, the the city was was predominantly the the culture or the belief was predominantly focused on the you know the god gods and goddesses and one of those was Diana the goddess of fertility and it was um Ephesus was a city a booming city just like New York now is to the United States and people would come and they would trade and they would buy these statues of Diana and all of this, that, and the other. But when the Christians came about and it, it was a revolutionary movement and less and less people were buying these statues of Diana and that caused a plummet in sales, which of course it caused an uproar. Anything that got to do with money, I don't care what time period we talking about, ancient or now, it's still, it, it just, it's always going to make someone upset. And... Pastor Jones said, you know, imagine, imagine, you know, if the Lord were to write a letter to you, what would he say? And in chapter two, it starts off, write this letter to the angel of the church in Ephesus. This is a message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand. The one who walks among the seven gold lampstands. And this is referring to the angel of the church. Um, and it says, I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles, but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. So the Lord is, is applauding them for being discerning the fact that they have seen these false prophets come through and, and Pastor Jones was saying, you know, nowadays anybody and everybody, you know, can call themselves Christian or an apostle or a minister and I'm a church. And, you know, he gave the analogy like he said, you know, you have an uncle or a cousin and they say that they're going to be a minister for five months later. All of a sudden they have a church or, you know, they're a minister. And he said they have a church in their living room and five of the people are his bodyguards and five of the other people are his entourage and that type of thing. So he, the Lord is applauding them for being discerning. However, uh, verse four in chapter two of Revelation said, but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, 
I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. So that was a really powerful scripture. And Pastor Jones focused a a great deal on that scripture. Um, That, you know, even though the people were being discerning and they had been enduring, you know, there are lots of things that we endure in our lives, our jobs and and, uh, I don't know what else. There are lots of things that we endure, but we can go through the motions and fall out of love with God, fall out of love with the church. And so what Pastor Jones was saying, what has happened to a lot of us is we have lost that first love, that first passion and zeal and love for God. You know, when we used to get up early in the morning and pray pray and read or or you know maybe you like to go to the park and spend time with God and look at nature and those things that we used to do at first when we first fell in love with God we don't do now and he's saying that in order to, for you to regain that love you need to do what you did at first and then in terms of um repentance in terms of sin if you don't repent i will come The Lord is saying, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place. And Pastor Jones was explaining to us, and he had a had a lampstand or like a menorah. And that is what that represented in the church. And he's the Lord is saying, if you don't repent and and return back to me, if you don't ask for forgiveness of your sins and turn away from what you have been doing, you will lose your lampstand, lose your light, lose your favor. So that applies to the church. That also applies to us as individuals. If we continue to do the things that we're not supposed to do, that we know is not godly, that is separating us from him, for example, adultery or uh, uh, fornication, um, what else, Uh, stealing, I don't know, lots of things. Because you've seen it. You've seen it time and time and time again where like a a big, big, particularly pastors lately, a lot of these people, and they could, they very well could be false prophets, not in a sense that they are not claiming the Lord's name or believing in Jesus, but false prophets, you know, saying, saying, speaking doctrine that doesn't necessarily make sense, you know, doctrine that is not exactly biblical, doing things that is actually not biblical. So like, for example, Eddie Long, I remember he had this, uh, one time he had this service where he was sitting in the middle and like he was being crowned or something. I don't know. Go watch the video or look at it. Look up Eddie Long being crowned or something. And they had the, they had the scroll and they scrolled it out and they wrapped it around him. It was weird. I've never seen that in my life, but you know, he's, he's, I, I don't know. Um, and he was, Eddie Long got in trouble for, uh, oh, well, he was discovered sleeping with a lot of the young men in the church. And so if a lot of, uh, people of course ended up leaving his church and he lost some of that favor, his lampstand was removed. And if we don't repent, if we don't return back to the first, our first love, then our lampstand will be removed. Our effectiveness in, in Christ and, and, and all of that, our light will lose it. People will lose trust and faith in us, that type of thing. And this has happened in my own life to a certain extent. Um, but by the grace of God, it is never too late. If you repent and you return, you simply return to the things you used to do, like wake up in the morning and pray and read your Bible. If you return to the things you used to do, the Lord will restore you and renew you and renew your favor and renew your light. This is awesome. I love the word. And it said in verse six, but this is in your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans just as I do. So, you know, it's one thing to hate what the Lord hates, you know, sin. But for example, Pastor Jones gave us our, and one of the questions that the Lord revealed to him is, are you going to be known for what you hate or for what you love? And a lot of Christians are known for hating, um, well, let let me, let me rephrase that. Are you going to be known for hating? 
I, I'm trying to get this right. So, you know, as people, as Christians are not supposed to, are supposed to hate the things that the Lord hates. We're also supposed to love the things that he loves. There you go. So are you hating, um, you know, homosexuality, but not loving the homosexual? Because it's their people. The Lord loves his people, his creation. We all have sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. Um, and another one of his questions, I believe, were, you know, what is it that is holding you back from, or what is it that you need to return to that you used to do when the Lord became your first love? What is it that you need to do to return to that? Um, but it's such, I mean, it's such a powerful word. Um, and it was amazing and it blessed me and it encouraged me that despite the, the things and mistakes that we have made, um, it's important to be discerning. It's important to, to hate the things that God hates, but also love the things that he loves. Um, and not to be judgmental of other people and to make sure that we repent and not lose that love because that will affect all aspects of our life and so yeah that's it from me and peace